actual American Hydrogen Association hydrogen vehicle that we're going to go for a ride in. We're going to show how to use a number of different fuels. We're going to show how to use homemade liquid fuels, homemade gaseous fuels, and in every instance we'll show it's high boosted by being aided with hydrogen combustion that characterizes whatever that other fuel so combustion might be. So this vehicle can burn gasoline and you can add a little hydrogen to it to make it go really efficient? That's right, or it can burn propane or it can burn what we call terpenes, which are uh, liquids that are produced by destructive distillation of almost anything, but we particularly here in, the, in, the, in this area, citrus area, like to use citrus wastes. Now what's this here? This is a carbon tank for controlling the uh, condition of uh, gaseous storage. It can be a pressurized natural gas, landfill gas, hydrogen, or a mixture of such gases, or it can be a mixture of propane and hydrogen. And what it is is then a uh, type of vessel that we prefer to use that has the ability to withstand a full stick of dynamite, six rounds on target with a 357 Magnum. So it's very, very safe. It's very, very safe. It's safer than a gasoline tank. And far safer than almost everything else on board the vehicle. If you have a for instance, a fire that burns off the paint, burns off the rubber, burns off the tires, the tank will survive. And this is a carbon, this example is a carbon fiber tank. This is a carbon fiber tank. If you'd cut this tank in two, you could make it into a vessel for melting steel. So most people in doing their conversions of their vehicles, they're going to be dealing with fiberglass aluminum wrapped, fiberglass wrapped aluminum tanks, aren't they? Well, they might or they might use carbon. We would uh, Carbon, are they, these tanks available in the market now? They are. So you can, here's, here's my American Express card number and right. give it to me. You can get a tank like this from uh, three major U.S. or North American manufacturers. You can get it from, um, in the Midwest, from uh, Lincoln and Lincoln, Nebraska. And how much does a tank like this one cost? Oh, under uh, $700. That cheap now? That's right. For how many cubic feet of storage? Well, it depends on the pressure, of course, but uh, this, that'd be a 5,000 PSI tank. And you could also, um, from... Um, Dynatech or from um, Structural Composites Industries get a 10,000 PSI tank for a much larger range or wow. from Lincoln for that matter and I mention them again because uh, these are the local producers, local North American producers. Now everyone's asking how far is that tank going to take this vehicle? Oh well this vehicle has about a 700 mile range on its combination of uh, high boost fuels. 700 miles on that tank plus what you, liquid you put in, in the... Uh... Jump in, I'll give you a lift. Okay. Five. Okay, here we are. Roy, you said let's go for a drive. We're in the GL, let's go for a drive. What we're going to show is a combination of fuels. We're going to show how to run on what is in the liquid tank, how to show what is on the gaseous tank, and the combination of the two. And we'll show a number of operations by which we can adjust on the fly the timing of the ignition to suit any of these fuels or their combinations. So this vehicle can run on gasoline, it can run on hydrogen, it can run on natural gas, it can run on hydrogen and natural gas, hydrogen and gasoline, hydrogen, natural gas and gasoline, and you can control all of that right from these switches right here. That's right. I can control all that and provide the best fuel economy. I can get uh, over 50 miles per gallon on a GGE equivalency up to about 65 miles per gallon on a GGE equivalent by using these controls to make the optimization for that particular fuel type. Well, let's start the thing up. We're in a real hydrogen car now. Straight. That will not allow... What we're going to do is start on uh, straight hydrogen. Okay, we just started on straight hydrogen. We're actually cleaning the air that comes in the engine. And now we're going to um, give it a test drive. So you have pure hydrogen in the tank back here? Uh, well, pretty pure. I say it's pure because it's mostly hydrogen. We don't worry, as we would with a fuel cell, for instance, about hydrogen purity. Which is one of the huge advantages of an internal combustion engine over a fuel cell. Some fuel cells need to have what's called four nines, five nines pure hydrogen. And we don't care about octane because what we're uh, doing is making a much higher, as it, as it is practical to say, octane by adding hydrogen. So you can have the lowest of lowest quality gasolines in here and the hydrogen adds your octane and your better combustion and efficiency to the whole it, thing. It characterizes the combustion event as a hydrogen event. And see what did I tell someone? It was adding hydrogen to gasoline is like 
pouring gasoline in a room full of, of wood. Yeah. You light the gasoline, it lights all the wood real quickly, and the hydrogen is the same analogy. The hydrogen lights all the gasoline very quickly in the cylinder. That's right. It gives you the ability to kindle all these other fuels. Now, if I change from one fuel to another, I can change immediately the timing, either by knowing what it needs to be or by determining the best. So, so again, we're going back to the classroom where we talked about top dead center. That's right. That knob down there is changing your timing, which is changing whether you're firing at top dead center That's or right. before or after. That's right. That's exactly right. But what we're showing is the ability, as we just did and we could have noted it, is to uh, do all the things that it needs to do with traffic. It makes the speed limit everywhere. Step on it, Roy. And shows the ability to uh, not only make the speed limit, but give the fuel economy that uh, needs to be achieved across the country for energy independence. This is like riding in a regular car. Well, yeah, it is a regular car. It just is uh, much more efficient and able to use fuels that are homemade fuels. If you want to be your own bootlegger, this is your car. Oh, you mean if I want to make alcohol and put it into a vehicle, this is it? This is it. If you want to make your own uh, producer gas, this is it. Yep. And we'll take time to note here that Knowledge Publications is releasing a book in the near future on alcohol production through solar. That's right. Okay, now we're going to should we be so should we switch fuels now or any advantage to it? Uh, well, we'll show how to make the adjustment and uh, switch fuels. What we're able to do is uh, make any of, in, in this event, three combinations of fuel. Okay. We can use the hydrogen characterized combustion with a very small amount of hydrogen that is adequate to run unthrottled as we are right now, along with these other hydrocarbons. So that just we like the little add. five horsepower John Deere, there's no throttle body, no carburetor on this vehicle. That's right. Now what, I, what I'm doing right now is making the switch over. You just through the switch, okay. So I'm, I'm now going to the uh, liquid tank, as, yep. I, as I did, and now I'm going to make the adjustment in timing. And now we're running again. We're running again, full speed on what right now? Gasoline and? Well, there's a mixture of gasoline and what we get out of destructive distillation. Are you telling me we're driving on a tank full of gasoline and terpenes right now? That's right. This isn't gasoline in here that I can put in a regular vehicle. Oh no, it would not. It would bulk. <laughs> oh wow! The regular vehicle wouldn't. So we're driving cheap right now. We're really driving cheaply, using fuels from what would have rotted and been wasted into the atmosphere as a greenhouse gas and atmospheric pollution. So is there a hydrogen boost on us right now? It's, there's a hydrogen boost enough so we don't run any throttle on the air entry. Very small hydrogen boost. That's right. Well, it turns out to be about 5 to 7% of the uh, BTUs. Okay. okay, so we're throwing in, for every 100 BTUs of terpenes or gasoline we're throwing in, we're throwing in about 7 BTUs of hydrogen right now, so we got that gasoline in a room full of wood effect. That's right. That where it's characterizing the combustion of everything. It does, and it uh, gives rise to another advantage, and that is that if you don't have a vacuum in the engine, then you can produce much more net output, so no cylinder is taxed to make the vacuum. So if I reach behind and turn off the hydrogen right now, this engine wouldn't run at all or very badly because the hydrogen wasn't characterizing the combustion. Yeah, as soon as it bled down the pressure, it would stop being an adequate kindling for the terpenes to be ignited. And we'd start smoking and uh, producing a very poor ignition. But as it is, it, it shows how to use a very cheap fuel, regardless of its octane rating, and uh, meet road conditions very efficiently. And what happens if you throw both switches? 